Hello, hello. Is that you on the screen? Oh my gosh, I yeah. wish I could see you. Hi, Aneha. <laughs> How are you? Where are you dialing in from? Hi, Caroline. Uh, I'm dialing in from India, Delhi. Yeah, from Delhi. Okay, it's from Delhi. Because I think the last time, well, no, the second last time you and I met was in Bangalore, I think, before. Wasn't that a big inclusion summit? I think it was. Yeah, we, I remember that yes. one. Anyway, um, first of all, Naha, it's wonderful to have the time with you. Um, for those of you who may not know Neha Aurora, she's the founder of Planet Abled. She's a dear, dear friend and colleague from the great change makers or shaker uppers or system changers in our community. We really miss you here today. Um, actually, we've all, so many of us have been talking about where's our lovely Neha. So know that you're missed. Um, and before we speak and before I hand over to you, Neha, I just want to say for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Caroline Casey, the troublemaker and founder of the Valuable 500. And a little audio description today, I'm not wearing electric green or electric orange. I'm wearing an electric pink turtleneck under a tweed jacket. I am a woman of very white skin because I have albinism and white blonde hair. And I am not sitting beside my washing machine, but in the Zero Conference, Zero TV in the UN. So that's kind of an upgrade from my, yeah, my toilet or my washing machine. So Neha, would you like to just introduce yourself and just give us an audio description? Tell us what kind of day you're having and, and then we're going to start our conversation. Sure. So I'm so, so glad to be here and uh, virtually because I so wanted to be there in person. So I'm missing all of you. And uh, uh, hi, I'm Neha and I'm the founder of Planet Abled. Uh, my visual description is I have short hair, uh, a wheatish uh, complexion and uh, I'm wearing black. I have a peach wall behind me on which colorful Buddhist flags are being hung. Um, and I'm joining you from uh, Delhi in India. And I'm so excited to be here today. Well, Neha, you have, like many of us, have been working to radically transform a system and your passion is tourism. And I heard you speaking, um, I think it was yesterday, saying that your dream and desire is that anybody and everybody, regardless of disability, can get on a plane at the last moment and go wherever they want in the world. So firstly, can you just tell us about the journey of Planet Abled and your passion for it, what's been happening? And then I think I'd love to touch off on what's been going on with the pandemic because nobody's really been going anywhere. But at least begin by telling us your big journey. Sure. So I started planning the journey of Planet Able because I wanted to travel with my parents. Simple. I wanted to go for a holiday myself. So that is why I had to start Planet Able because as a child and a young adult, I could never go for a holiday. My parents are both persons with disabilities. So my father is blind, mother is a wheelchair user, and perhaps all their life. So like they are in now 70s and 80s they had never been on a holiday before. So I had to do something about it. And uh, when I also started earning and uh, started traveling, it never ended in a very good experience. And all the other solutions that I could see across the world, they were not inclusive. They were single disability focused, so it did not work for a family like ours, which had two different types of disabilities. So, and over the years, like we have been around for a little more than six years now, and uh, we have learned and evolved over the years. We started as an inclusive service provider, making people travel solo or go on romantic getaways and inclusive groups where we mix people with and without disabilities to travel together. Uh, but we also learned that traveling with a disability is expensive. So to become financially viable as a business, we had to tweak ourselves towards uh, um, a concierge-based travel service where traveling was expensive. And we did well as a business pre-pandemic. And uh, when COVID happened, it actually gave us the time to think and reflect that what we can do about it, how we can uh, increase our impact 
from just being a travel service provider to an ecosystem enabler and how we can uh, reach out to 1.3 billion people with disabilities and over 260 million elderly ever growing uh, who even cannot afford to travel. How can we impact their lives as well? So an economies of scale is the solution to it. And inclusion is the best tool where we can actually achieve that in, uh, uh, economies of scale. Because once you mainstream a solution and a feature, uh, the cost by default goes down. And everyone gets uh, impacted positively, not just persons with disabilities. So uh, uh, during the last two years of the pandemic, we are now building a technology platform, which is, has a smart uh, UX and AI, where based on customer behavior and access needs, uh, people are showcased uh, uh, certified experiences and travel products uh, according to their needs so that they can make informed travel decisions. And to enable the industry stakeholders through consulting and training, we are leading them to certification so that they can rate themselves on how disabled friendly they are for all types of disabilities. So um, all of this uh, has been happening in the background. We are growing, we have expanded to Europe. We are part of an accelerator in the Netherlands. And uh, we are excited for uh, the times that lie ahead. Well, if I think about how much you've achieved in six years, and it's so interesting to say, I mean, I think those of us who work in the so social entrepreneur or change maker or innovator space, we're always rushing so hard, thinking we're not doing enough. And you so rightly said the pandemic gave you a chance, I guess, to come off the dance floor and, and really slow down for a bit and to even broaden your impact. I mean, now to be an ecosystem enabler, which is exactly what we're looking for, right? mainstream and what you're saying, which really reflects on what Robert, who is the CEO of Bank Austria, was saying yesterday. When we create inclusive solutions, yeah, the 1.3 billion people, they benefit, but they are welcomed by the 100% of people, right? The whole just under 8 billion of us. And I guess I want to ask you, from your perspective, what do you think is, um, what do you think is going to help you scale? What do you need to help you get to that big vision that you have, which is inclusive travel for everyone for all, not just India, but for the world. What do you need from us? What do you need from the community? Tell us, come on, because you're here, you're part of our family. So what we need from a community is to actually come together. Because uh, the challenge uh, that lies today with all of us here is, uh, that uh, everyone, there are some amazing solutions that exist across the world, but they're working in silos. And we all have to come together in our own respective regions, share the best practices that uh, exist, and uh, uh, like put it on one platform so that everyone has access to that uh, knowledge and information, and they can make their own decisions, have that freedom of choice, uh, to decide how they want to uh, travel and experience this wonderful world. So all of the resources we need are in terms of collaboration, scale, money. Money is, I think, uh, <laughs> that uh, we all are struggling with uh, work in the inclusion space uh, because we compete with mainstream solutions. And yes, we are mainstream. We are like affecting 15 to 25% of the world population. Uh, but still looked upon as something that is a uh, sideline. So there's not enough money coming into these kind of innovations. So can I ask you, I mean, what is the state of the tourism and travel industry? Can, oh, look, let's talk before COVID, okay? Because we're only all starting to travel again. I mean, I personally don't see it as an inc inclusive experience. Somebody who ha is registered blind and it's difficult, but what's stopping it changing now? How, why are we not seeing this is not a niche opportunity, but as a mainstream solution for brilliant customer service for everyone? What is the state of it and why are we still going around in circles? Like, why are you still having to convince people? So, uh, 
there are a couple of reasons for that. One important being is disability is often perceived perceived to be just a wheelchair user, especially yeah. for all the businesses that I have ever talked to. They are like, oh, we made a ramp or a maximum we made a disabled friendly toilet. That is where accessibility ends. And even if some of the uh, businesses have gone ahead and included uh, features for other types of disabilities, uh, sometimes blind and a little bit of uh, uh, deaf users, nothing beyond that. And this is globally, this is not just from India I'm talking about. Um, uh, the perception is access is just a ramp. And we need to, like, that is where the, 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 the gap, biggest gap lies. These businesses are also uh, confused because uh, whatever solutions in silos also they are seeing across the world are actually single disability focused. So they see only that, okay, there is a separate company for uh, blind people. Okay, there is a separate company for deaf people and there is a separate company for wheelchair users. Uh, the crowdsourcing accessibility data gathering apps are all wheelchair user driven. There is nothing that exists for other kinds of sensory disabilities, intellectual disabilities, uh, or uh, cognitive disabilities, psychosocial disabilities. And if, if you look at the data uh, by the CDC uh, in the US, out of uh, the world population of 15% of persons with disabilities, only 13% yeah. are actually mobility impaired. The rest have other types of disabilities. So where is the access for that? Yeah, exactly. It's not there. And I think the, one of the things that we've learned in the pandemic, and is this true, are you seeing this reflected in the, the area of tourism? When the pandemic came in, we realized that everybody needed adjustments everybody needed accommodations it wasn't just people with disabilities and for the reasons that happened prior to the pandemic oh no the adjustments are too complex too expensive we can't do it and then the pandemic proved that we all needed it is that the kind of narrative now that's sort of landing with tourism or that you're you're seeing happen that it's stopping the siloed categorization but looking at holistically really good customer service uh, I think somewhere in between, we the, the tourism industry is lying in between desperation for business because they have been out of business for the last two years. And plus there is more sensitivity that is also coming in because they have been disabled by the environment and the factors out of their control. So they are more sensitive to the needs. But the challenge again lies even the big corporations like the Britain.com or uh, the TripAdvisors or the Airbnbs also are like they want to do it. They, they have the intention, but they don't know what to do. And there is no one who is actually guiding them uh, to how to help them how to do it. And they still haven't realized uh, the hidden opportunity of business lies there. I mean, an average disabled traveler spends 30 percent more. Uh, oh than gosh. an average one disabled traveler. And uh, according to a, a business disability forum a report that came in 2020, people with disabilities and their families have $13 trillion of disposable income. Where is that money going to go? <laughs> well, that's the whole, I mean, that's the, the key point. What you're saying is it's good business, not just good from what is doing, serving the human beings that were here, but actually delivering to the bottom line. Now, I'm being told that we have to wrap up, but just, I want to end on two things. You're looking for a really good financial backer to help you scale. So anybody out in the community who wants to help Neha and Planet Able make our whole planet inclusive for all, will you please get in touch with us? But secondly, you get to get 30 seconds about what you believe inclusive travel could be. And then I'm going to hand over because we're going to see what this conversation has just looked like in pictures. So just give me, you get your, what is your absolute dream for planet abled and inclusive travel? Go for it. So my absolute dream is to make disability access mainstream. There are no barriers in tourism that exist and the planet is open for everyone to travel uh, despite any disability, age, impairment or medical condition. 
And at every point of the customer life cycle and the journey while they're traveling, we have integrated assistive solutions that exist across the world so that the whole uh, ecosystem becomes inclusive of everyone. Everyone benefits, not just persons with disabilities. That is the goal. Oh, thank you, Neha. Now I'm going to hand over here to our one. Do you remember the beautiful illustrations? Yes, well, this is especially for you. Hi, Neha. Good to see you. Hi. Uh, let me give you a short summary of what I heard. Um, the dream is to have an inclusive travel world for everyone. Um, not only building ramps, but providing uh, accessible travel opportunities for all people with disabilities. And comparing pre and post pandemic and all these times, um, you took some time to think um, during COVID and um, you became even more of an enabler, um, creating a business that is really a business solution for everyone. And the last words you were saying was like, uh, spread your know-how and make sure that people see that this is a business opportunity um, to create accessible travel for everyone. Um, you are bringing communities together. You say that's really important to have communities come together, provide their know-how on um, travel, put that in one platform and don't make it like a special thing to have accessible tourism, but make it a big mainstream uh, opportunity. And if any, anybody wants to um, help you and support you, we have all your information right here and of course on Zero Project website. So, and regards, see you next year. So Neha, thank you so much. We're gonna wrap up and I just wanna say a huge thank you to you. Planet Enabled, our planet for everyone to love and enjoy. We love you, take care, bye-bye. Bye-bye, take care, thank you.